Yes. A man considered in the running to become Indonesia's next president is former governor of Jakarta, Anis Baswedan, and it's a delight to welcome him into the studio. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for lovely, inviting, lovely Beverly. Lovely to meet you. Now, tell me, you've met with the Foreign Minister, Penny Wong, and also the RBA Governor, Philip Lowe. I think every Australian wants to meet with him at the moment <laughs> <laughs> with these rising interest rates. It is a sign that our government is taking you very seriously and your potential presidential bid. Um, what was important about you? What did you feel was important about coming here and meeting with someone like Penny Wong, someone like Philip Lowe? Yes, indeed. I'm, I'm, I'm delighted with the invite from the Australian government to, to visit. And we both were neighbours and we'll always be neighbour. And we had worked closely on many issues and the invite here gave me an opportunity to reconnect with many friends, academia, people in government, as well as uh, business communities for exchange of views. Uh, we share similar challenges in the region. Give us an idea of what are those challenges in your mind. For example, uh, we are experiencing challenges in the environmental issues. Mm. Climate change is definitely an issue that we have to tackle together. And then about uh, growth and prosperity in the region. And then also balance uh, in terms of stability in the region. So many of that. And, and it's always good to hear a perspective of our neighbours. Mm. And I truly appreciate uh, Australia's stance on many issues that Indonesia is facing. And including, which is always repeated, uh, the importance of having an integrated territorial in Indonesia. Mm. And Australia has repeatedly saying that we supported an integrated Indonesia, and that is important for us too. Yeah. And on the other hand, you know, we would like to see more people to people uh, exchange. I think on the G2G uh, partnership has been very strong. I think this is among the highest of all time. And then the business to business need to grow even further. Yes, we do, because I mean that has been a criticism of President Widodo, that the, the, the development, the potential development business-wise between Australia and Indonesia has not really cemented itself. Is that a priority for you? I, I think so. I think we would like to see more business engagement between Indonesia and Australia. If I'm not mistaken, Indonesia is ranked 13th as Australia business partner. We'd like to see that go up a lot higher. And we need to be on the top 10 of Australia's business partners. And, and, and for that, I think we really need to start not only just inviting Australians to come and invest in Indonesia, or we import more uh, from Australia. But I think it's also important to underline that harvesting partnership in business, partnerships in uh, government relationship, need to start from people to people engagement. But don't you think it also needs to have the right climate, not too much bureaucracy, not too much red tape. You need those, of course, those safeguards, but you need it to be accessible, which often is a struggle for Australian businesses in Indonesia. Uh, on the other hand, we have, we have engagement uh, quite extensive with uh, business partners from different countries. Mm -hmm. So I think it is also about how we view each other, as that we need each other and we are the closest neighbours. Uh, for Australia, Indonesia is the closest uh, to the north and for us, we're, whenever we're looking to southeast, it's Australia. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the feeling of closeness need to be restrengthened, uh, need to be strengthened. And I think that is the area which, you know, uh, based on our conversation in Sydney, in Canberra, and today, uh, I believe that is the message that we need to echo even louder. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about the divisiveness of politics in recent years. We see it still going on in America, awful divisiveness. We had a period here in Australia which seems to be easing a little bit. You have been very heavily criticised for a very divisive campaign when you ran for governorship and won because you teamed up, you, you played the religion card and it's, it's kind of haunted you ever since. Do you regret it? Let me put it this way. Whenever you have an election and then you have competing candidates, give you, give you one example. If the candidates were 
were different in terms of gender, one male and one female, then gender issue will dominate the conversation. It can be the divisive factors. But you could, if play, it is, you could have played the bigger man. Let, let, me, let me continue Sorry, that. Let and then if, if the candidates come from different ethnic groups, then ethnic issue can divide. And even sometimes when you have a referendum where there is no person, there is no faith involved, it can be divisive. Look at the Brexit, for example. It was divisive there. There is no person, there is no religion, there is no faith in there. So that is the same thing. When there is a Muslim candidate and a Christian candidate, then religious issue come into equations. So what but happened... But how you play that card can be a very, very subtle, very, you know, right. not, not <clears throat> ugly, not nasty. During election, every side always label the other side in every elections. That was in 2017. I have completed my term now, five years, and I didn't challenge those labeling at that time because I don't want to challenge statement with statements. So what I did is I work five years in Jakarta and truly provide equal opportunity, equal treatments to all religious groups and any religious group. And in fact, we created the feeling of stability, the feeling of peace, in Jakarta, and now it's all completed. So I'm inviting everyone to judge me, not based on assumption, but, but on based record. on record. So in this, you know, you, you've got the backing of three considerable parties. A one again is a conservative Islamist group, a Islamist party. Do you undertake not to go down that path again? Will you try and keep religion out? of your presidential bid? And it has been proven that I may have support from various different groups. Yeah. But when it comes to making decisions, I have priorities based on four things. One is principle of equality. Number two is public interest. Number three is common sense. And number four is law, rules and regulations. So it's not about who supported you, but how you make decisions when you're in office. Yeah. And I have gone through five years of service, and uh, I think we did it according to those principles it, that does not automatically reflect who supported you, but the principle is reflected in the policy. So there was nothing owed to that support, is what you're saying? And that's exactly the point. Sometimes you assume that if you're supported by this pay. group and that group, then you will be acting not according to the principle of equality, the common sense, public interest, or also rules and regulations. And I have gone through five years proving that we can do that. So Therefore, it, looking to the future... Yes, what are those four <clears throat> things? How are you going to bring those four things into play? What are the issues you see in this coming election? Uh, I, it's several things. But uh, number one, we are happy with the economic growth that we are experiencing, despite the fact that we had serious contraction during COVID, which every you know, country across the globe is experiencing. However, we need to improve the quality of our growth. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. It means growth is reflected in the numbers, you know, the percentage of growth. But that does not reflect the distribution of that growth. Our economy has been centralized in Java, and also northern coastal of Java especially, what we'd like to do is to expand into regions of Indonesia. So center for economic growth is not only in certain places, but in major area of Indonesia. Mm. So equality is something that we would like to address in the area of economic development, in the area of education, which matters a lot. If quality of education is happening across Indonesia. So parents don't have to send their kids to major cities in Java for quality education. That's two. Number three is uh, healthcare uh, system across Indonesia. So the bottom line, uh, and this is a major uh, hope for uh, people across Indonesia, is that equal access to jobs, to source of economic growth, to quality of education, to quality of healthcare. And then on top of all of that is a policy with regard to agriculture, policy with regard to fisheries, and we are a very uh, rich natural resources country. Mm. And 
systematic uh, approach on allowing equal growth across this region is of interest in the general public. Yeah. I've traveled quite a few in the past few months. I ended my term uh, in October, and since then I traveled a lot, and people were saying we're happy with the economic growth, but we would like to see more uh, distributions aspect of that, so that household across Indonesia will experience growth the way the national level growth is being reflected in the statistics. That is sounded across the board. Let's go. I want to finish where we started, and that was where you talked about balance, balance in the region. You know, how do you feel about China's growing influence and grab for power? Indonesia has, you know, is beholden to China on a number of big projects. Is that a concern to you? Do you feel that that has been a mistake? I think we need to always uh, pursue foreign policy based on our principles. Indonesia has adopted since then a non-aligned uh, view about where we put ourselves in the world. And we need to continue on that track. So we, on the one hand, we need to continue to maintain good relationship with China. On the other hand, we also need to maintain you know, good relationship with the US and other major, major players. And what we'd like to see is to, for all parties, especially in the region of Southeast Asia, to continue upholding the fact that Southeast Asia has been peaceful for more than 50 years. This is a region where tensions were absent yeah. in the past 50 years. But no longer. <clears throat> but we do hope it is continue to be that way because it is very important for everyone in the regions. So, uh, Australia. So as president, would you play a greater international role I that so. hasn't hasn't been? I think so. Feature? Indonesia needs to play uh, more more active roles in the international arena, and that we need to uh, be active based on the on our principles. So foreign policy does not always reflect. Uh, more transactional uh, approach, meaning it is not only about how much money foreign countries are coming into us, it is not only about trade, but it is about our contributions in sustaining peace and stability in the regions and across the globe. And Indonesia is the fourth largest country in the world need to be to play it's bigger role play a bigger role in that. Part. Oh yeah, and especially in place. Asia. So, you know, we're talking South Asia. South Asia. We're almost forty yeah. percent of the population in, in South Asia. Voice. So we definitely need to be a little bit uh, assertive and more active. We look forward to watching you proceed down this path, and it's really great to have had you with us. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for having me, Beverly. Great pleasure.